Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, we are from Group 3. And here, we'd like to present our presentations about vowel and consonant. So, my name is Hasna Viva, and my students' numbers are 2010631073. 1060082 And next Okay, thank you Asna. Let me introduce myself. My name is Gina Safitri and my student's number is Two zero one zero six three one zero six zero zero eight one. And next, Fadila Salma, please introduce yourself. Hey, my name is Fadila Salma Nur Fitriani. My student number is two zero one zero six three one zero six zero zero seven. Okay, so in here, we'd like to explain about what is a vowel and consonant and how many parts of vowel and consonant and the last is what is the difference of vowel and consonant. The first material will be explained by myself. I will explain about vowel. So, what is vowel? The definition of vowel speech sound, which is produced by comparatively open configuration of the vocal tract with vibrations of the vocal cords, but without audible friction, and which is a unit of the sound system of language that forms the nucleus of syllable. The vowels offer the greatest problem, so we will start there. The vowel system of English is relatively large. Latin had five vowels, hence the five vowels letter in our Roman alphabet, a modern form of Latin, Spanish has also only five, Italian has seven, but English has at least 20. Vowels vary more than consonants according to their relative prominence within a string, both because they are main carriers of intonation be it grammatical or emotional, and because they carry stress both at the level of the word and at different phrasal levels. Thus, not only intonation, but also rhythm is carried more by vowels than by consonant. So, there are parts of vowels. The first one is short vowels, long vowel, monophthongs, diphthongs, and triphthongs, and the last, I will explain about the weak vowels. First one, I will like to explain about short vowel. Short vowel are vowel sounds that are pronounced in a short form. The example of short vowels are leak, leg, leg, lock, look, and lock. They have two main features. One is that they are phonetically shorter than the other vowels. As we saw she, when we introduce the long vowels, the other is that they are phonologically never able to appear at the end of a word in English. They must always be followed by a consonant. So, by introducing the short vowels first, we shall also have to practice the use of some of short vowels. First, we shall also have to practice the use of some of the consonant symbol. Some of the letters of the alphabet function also as a phonetic symbol such as B, D, F, G, H, K, L, M, N, P, R, S, P, V, W, and Z. All with their common English values represent the initial sounds in get not that of gem. Considering the properties we have briefly outlined, the vowel duration contrasts are interpreted in different ways. 
namely as quality contrast in finish and stage and as a syllable cut contrast in standard German and Dutch. We believe the proposed dichotomy plausible and convincing from a phonological point of view, the claim that modern standard German has to be classified as a syllable cut language rests mainly on the following assumptions. First, the vowel duration contrasts are found only under word stress, which is dynamic in nature. And the second one, stressed short vowels are disallowed in open syllables and require the presence of subsequent consonants in the same word. Third one, a single intervocalic consonant when it is preceded by a short stressed level is always ambisyllabic. Based on the data, all of the short vowels have lower number of incorrect pronunciation than the long vowels. Where the total numbers for incorrect pronunciation of short vowels were 79 and for number long vowels were 338. So it has a very big difference between them. It shows that foreign language students' problems are caused by influence of their first language, which is Indonesia. It is known as a negative transfer and it causes of errors in learning another language. In this case, it's English. It is because Indonesia and English are different and lead more potential error occurred. Next, the second one, I will explain about long vowel. So long vowel is the term used to refer to vowel sounds whose pronunciation is the same as its letter name. And the long vowels are literally longer than the short vowels. You may be able to hear the difference in the length of the vowels in the two words green and green. If I'm asked to say the vowel that occurs in green, I'm likely to say it as E. In, if I ask to say the vowel in green, I'm likely to say it as E. So now if you can compare the two together, E and E, if you consult politicians' books on the description of English pronunciation, you will find details of the difference in length. The long vowels are roughly twice the length of the short vowels. This is such a significant phonetics difference that is, is the basis of one important grouping of vowels in English. Long vowels distinct from short vowels. There is also a phonological difference between the two, whereas short vowels have to be followed by a consonant in English. This is not the case for the long vowels. They can occur at the end of a word and checked as it were. The vowel in green appears at the end of the word agree. Without the necessity of a consonant following, or a consonant may follow, of course, as in agreed, but it is not required as in the case of short vowels. Long vowels are themselves divided into two groups according to how steady the tongue is while they are being pronounced. If the tongue is relatively steady, they are, they are all called monotones or pure vowels. If there is a disagree or degree of movement by the tongue, they are called diphthongs. In my pronunciation of the E vowel, the tongue remains relatively stable, but when I pronounce the vowel or, or I or A, the tongue rises to a higher position in the mouth and thus is qualified qualifies as a diphthong. Okay, next. I'd like to explain about monophthongs, diphthongs, and triphthongs. The length of diphthongal long vowels is symbolized by a double vowel symbols in which the starting and ending point of the tongue's movement are represented. For instance, the vowel in I, A, 
before it begins to move and E its position when it is finished. It is important to think of the diphthong as an essential part of a single vowel system in English and not as a separate system. When language and accents are compared, compared it may be tempting to treat the monophthongs and diphthongs separately for convenience, but to do so would be highly misleading as the short vowels and the long vowels both monophthongs and diphthongs from a single system. So, triptongs are the most complex English sounds in vowel category. They require a glide from one vowel to another and then to a third without interruption. There are five triptongs in GA and they are all composed of a closing diphthongs and a schwa sound at the end. According to Raj, triptongs are hard to hear and distinguish. They are subject to change in speech tempo and may be speaker dependent, which might be another factor behind perception problems. They don't appear often in English. Many words are pronounced with a triptongs only after a suffix is added to the end. Triptongs are more likely to be considered as a monosyllabic sounds in words such as a tower or a power. However, in words which involve a suffix such as player or lower, they are more likely to be perceived as bisyllabic sound. So like layer, prayer, higher, buyer, lawyer, royal, lower, mower, towel, power, the articulation of triptongs is similar to that of diphthongs in that they consist of multiple vowel sounds and there is no interruption in between. Once a closing diphthong is completed, the vowel is carried a central position by one last motion of the tongue. Lech, Fudge, and Johnson describe a diphthong as a sound that involves a change within one single vowel. And Kelly says definition of diphthong is a combination of vowel sounds. This vowel-like sounds consist of movement or glide from one vowel to another. Being in the vowel category, diphthongs are similar to tense or long vowels in terms of length. However, there are two parts of diphthongs. One starting point at a different end point. Lechford and Janssen states that these beginning and ending points are different from simple vowels. If the vowel's phonetics identity is cued by information that is temporally distributed in the acoustic signal, then classification from combined spectral slices in the transition and close to the vowel target should be better than a comparable classification from a single spectral slice at the vowel midpoint. On the other hand, under target theories of speech perception, since monophthongal vowels are sufficiently specified by information at the vowel midpoint, only diphthongs, but not monophthongs, should benefit from spectral information close to the vowel margins. Next, I will explain about the weak vowels. So there are two weak vowels in English wa as in the unstressed syllable of above and soba and short e, as in the unstressed syllable in RP example and sophie. Weak vowels can be interpreted as a limiting case of the tiny vertical line corresponding to the unstressed vowel of there, and that's wonderful. In the vowel of there carries the label show its pulse magnitude as realized by the converter. The weak vowel is similar, except that its pulse magnitude can vary between a small magnitude and zero. The ability to vary to the point of total disappearance, disappearance make it understandable why the phonological syllable corresponding to a weak vowel can count or not in a chant. 
English exhibit similar ambiguities that perhaps point to a parallel analysis. For example, the syllable count of words like higher, fire, oil, and boil seems quite indeterminate. Stanford student Lindsay Dunagan in a study involving 62 native English speakers found that respondents split about evenly on the question of whether higher was homophonous with higher, higher, and whether boil reigned with royal. There may be some phonological evidence that bears on the appropriate surface form for such words. For example, higher is monosyllabic in hiring, where there are is not vinyl, and higher is formed from two syllables, high and air. And this letter words doesn't seem to risk being confused with a monosyllabic word. Similarly, with boil, becomes clearly monosyllabic in boiler. Its counterpart, royal, on the other hand, is not likely to be mistaken for a monosyllable. Informally, several English speakers have volunteered that they would have no problem assigning higher and oil either one or two nuts in a chant analogies to the end anyone to mention earlier. While the hesitate to cases like higher and oil may be parallel to the what instances discusses in this paper in the, sin in the sense that their surface syllabic structure unambiguous. While their actual phonetic interpretation, the vocalization of R and I introduction ambiguities that lead them to be interpreted plausibly either as monosyllabic or disyllabic. To summarize the syllabic, phonological surface from a foie language of sui de la are rather straightforward present at the phonetic level, which involves describing the syllabic status of vowel sequences and weak vowels lend themselves quite naturally to analysis using the C or the model of Fujimura. The key is to distinguish the phonological status of the vowels, which is undeniably syllabic, from their phonetic status, where the notion syllable doesn't really play a role. So that's all the explanations about vowel. Next will be explained by Gina Safitri. For Gina Safitri, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Hasna. Okay, everyone. Uh, now, I will explain to you about the material of consonant. What is consonant? Consonant is a speech sound that is not a vowel. It also refers to letters of the alphabet that represent the sounds Z, B, T, G, and H are all consonant. Consonants are closed sounds. This means that there is some type of obstruction to the airflow from the lungs by part of the mouth coming into contact with each other or very nearly contacting, thus closing of the free flow of air. For example, the lips could become together for the sound B, as in the word ball, or the tongue tip could almost contact the gum ridge or alveolar ridge just behind the upper incisors for the sound S, as in sun. Plosives 
are defined as consonant sounds which involve first a stricture of the mouth that always no air to escape from the vocal tract. Second, the compression and release of the air, so there are four paces in the production of plosives. First, closure. Second, hold. Third, release. And fourth, post-release. English has six plosive consonants. There are P, T, K, B, D, and G. P and B are bilabial. That is, the lips are pressed together. For example, P for purse, B for bell. T and D are alveolar, so the tongue is pressed against the alveolar ridge. For example, T for talk and stop, D for dot and play. P and G are velar. The back of the tongue is pressed against an intermediate area between the hard and the soft palate. For example, K for kite, comb, queen, chronic, and excited. G for gone and exhaust. P T and K are voiceless. B, D, and G are normally voiced. Nasals. Nasals in phonetics, a nasal, also called a nasal occlusive, occlusive, or nasal stop in contrast with an oral stop or nasalized consonant is an occlusive consonant produced with a lower volume, allowing air to escape freely through the nose. The vast majority of consonants are oral consonants. The two major points that beginner students should understand about nasal sounds are first, the air completely blocked from leaving the mouth and is instead realized out through the nose. Second, all three nasal sounds are voiced, meaning that the vocal cords vibrate during the creation of the sounds. Examples of nasals in English are and, 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 um, in words such as and for nose, M for bring and M for mouth. Fricatives. Fricatives are consonant produced by forcing air through the narrow channel made by placing two articulators close together. This may be the lower lip against the upper teeth. In the case of the back of the tongue against soft palate. In the case of German, or the side of tongue against the molars, in the case of whales, this turbulent airfall is called frication. Fricative in phonetics, a consonant sound such as English F or V, produced by bringing the mouth into position to block the passage of the airstream, but not making complete closure so that air moving through the mouth generates audible friction. In addition to the F and V sounds, examples of fricatives in English are S as in sitter, Z as in zebra, and the two th 
sounds as in thing and this. Affricates. An affricate is a consonant that begins as a stop and releases us as a fricative. Generally, with the same place of articulation or most often coronal. It is often difficult to decide if a stop and fricative form a single phoneme or a consonant pair. English has two affricate phonemes. Ch and Z. Every cat, also called semiplosive, a consonant sound that begins as a stop, or sound with complete obstruction of the bridge stream, and concludes with a fricative or sound with incomplete closure and a sound of friction. Examples of every cats are the so sound in English chair, which may be represented phonetically as a T sound followed by S, the G in English jaw, or A D followed by the Z sound here in French jaw or in English jaw, and the T S sound often heard in German and spelled with Z as in Zen, meaning ten. So the next speaker is Fadila Salma. Fadila Salma, time is yours. Okay, I will explain about approximant. Approximant in phonetic a sound that is produced by bringing on articular in the vocal tract close to another with halt, however, causing audible friction or C fricative. Approximate includes semi vowel such as the Y sound in yes or the W sound in war. There are only three approximate in English and they are all voice. They are also all products with the soft palate trace and they are therefore oral sound. Formation of bilabial approximant. The first approximant to develop is W, as in the word win, when, and we. The sound is formed by the two lips approximating closely but not so close that friction is generated. There are stream then passes through this approximate closure and out of the mouth. This is the bilabial approximant or bilabial frictionless continue. This sound might occur at the beginning of syllable such as why, weak, and walk. Formation of palatal approximant. The second approximant to develop is typical why as in yes, you, and yeah. It is articular with the middle of the tongue approximating closely to the palate and it is consequently referred to as a palatal approximant or palatal frictionless continuum. As with the bilabial friction, frictionless continuum, the palatal friction Frictionalist continue might appear at the beginning of the syllabic but not at the ends. Formation of palatal approximant. The second approximant to develop is typical Y, as in yes, you, and year. Is it articular with the middle of the tongue approximating closely to the palate and it is consequently referred to as a palatal approximant or palatal frictionalist continue. As with the bilabial frictionalis continue, the palatal frictionalis continue might appear at the beginning syllable, but not at the ends. This means, therefore, that there are no English words ending with the sound Y. The next formation of alveolar approximant. And final approximant is R. As in red, Tran and rugby. 
The sound is formed by the blade of the tongue approximating closely to a position near the alveolar right. Consequently, is in known as an alveolar proximal or alveolar fictionalist continuum. It only occur in syllable initial position in British English. Okay, next syllabic consonant, syllabic M, as well as the occurrence of syllabic N in untreated syllables. Syllabic M can occur in similar environments. Example of syllabic M, which similarly take the full measure of syllable EA taking the nuclear vowel slot in the syllable include the following bottom 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 rhythm 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 blism 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 okay next syllabic and g in certain environment the third english nasal n may also occur as a syllabic consonant considering the following Broken, broken, broken. Here the end sequence is compressed. Such compression could possible yield syllabic end in the nuclear vowel slot EA. Broken. Future, in some instance, the occurrence of a failure plosive or here K adjacent to a nasal here and leads to the nasal assimilating uh, assimilating a uh, future of the velar plosive now it occurring now it occasionally happens that the nasal assimilate the place of articular of the velar plosive key i e the velar position this yield a velar nasal of course, the English velar nasal is N, or as in the word wing, wind. Hence, we can argue the broken undergoes, undergoes an assimilation through the process to yield broken. This assimilation is more likely to occur if the nasal consonant N occur between two velar consonant as in the following example broken k broken key broken key okay next syllabic l example of syllabic l filling the vowel slot and street syllable include the following bottle 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 handle 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 okay next inflection inflection formerly flexion or accidents in linguistic the change in the form of a word or in English usually the addition of endings to mark such designation as tense, person, number, gender, mood, voice, and case. English inflection indicates non-plural. Uh, example, cat, cats. Non-case example, girl, grills, Girls, girls, girls. Third person singular present tense. Example, I, you, we, they, buy, he buys. Uh, past ten. Example, we, we walk, we walk. X pitch. Example, I have called, I am calling. And comparative example, big, bigger, biggest.